Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. We are just thanking God for life this morning. We're thanking Him for health. We are so grateful this morning that we're here. We are alive. Hallelujah. We can open our mouths and we can praise the Lord this morning. There are many people who cannot. And so as we come here today in His presence, wherever you are, God is there with you. His presence is there with you, just as He is here with us in our studio this morning. And we are just blessing the Lord, thanking Him, worshiping Him this morning, giving Him honor and glory because there is none like unto Him. Why don't you take a time out this morning and just worship the Lord? Let's just praise Him. Let's just give Him glory and honor. Hallelujah, yes. hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and honor of all the praise. Lord, you're worthy. You are an awesome God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify your name. This is the first day when we come and we spend time just giving God thanks. Hallelujah. Just being in this presence this morning and just hearing his voice, hearing the word of God so that we might live. It is by those very words of God that we live, that we have life, that we have abundant life. Amen. And that's what we're here for this morning. Choose to live victoriously. The Bible says every child of God defeats this evil world and we can achieve victory through our faith. To live victorious, you must do three things. Restrict the devil from moving in your life. Don't give him any place in your life this morning. Amen. Dare to believe and reach for what God has promised you. Paul says, whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Amen. So, sow into your life. Amen. Spend time in the Word, spend time in prayer, spend time in His presence, and you will surely reap a harvest of blessing. Wake, and number three, wake up the dreamer within you. The Bible says, in these last days, old men are going to dream dreams. Young men will see visions, and even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. The Bible says he's going to pour out the spirit on all flesh. So your season of life that you're in right now, your gender or your race, color, whatever, this, this is no problem for God. Just ask him to rekindle your faith this morning and refocus your vision. Choose today that you're going to live victoriously. Amen. And that is the theme this morning of our service. Victory. Victory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you and praise you once more for giving us this opportunity to all come together wherever we are in the world and to worship together. Thank you for the opportunity of this platform, oh God, where it will be on the airwaves even throughout the whole week, Lord God. We have that opportunity and we're grateful this morning. We're grateful. We're grateful. Lord, we're asking you to take control over this service as you take control over every life of every person who is watching, of every home, Holy Spirit, visit with them today. You know every situation, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you may move upon every situation, oh God, and that today we're declaring that change will come and the victory that God intended for us will be made apparent in our lives so that everyone looking on will see that we are victorious through Christ. Lord, we give this day to you. Everything that's going to happen in this service, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, just hover over us, Holy Spirit, we pray. Fill us today, hallelujah, with your mighty power so that we may be able to withstand and to stand. Lord, we just thank you and praise you in no other name but the mighty name of your son, Yeshua, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank, you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my dear thank you. Rosie. And hello, everyone. Good morning, if it's morning where you are. And uh, if it's any other time, Greetings in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Uh, this is Floyd Antonio, and I am representing Christ through the Citadel to you this morning. I want to welcome you 
if you're tuned in from the islands of the sea or any country anywhere in the world, any continent, special welcome goes out to all of you from the countries in Europe who I know are tuning, those in the islands of the sea, particularly Jamaica, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, and uh, of course, all these United States of America and territories, welcome, welcome, welcome. Expect God to reveal some things to you this morning. We're going to start with a song of victory this morning. It's an old song about an old story, but make it new in your lives this morning. Victory in Jesus. We declare it for you this, this morning. Yes, 
my Savior forever. He sought me and he brought me with his redeeming blood. Uh, this is Sunday morning worship at the Citadel Incorporated from, from right here in sunny Florida. And we are very excited that you are able to join us today. I just want to remind you before we go any further that we are here on Sunday mornings at the same time in 11. And um, we release the service again via other uh, YouTube channel and so on. So we do ask you if these services bless you that you share them, whatever link, whether it's the Facebook link or the YouTube link, we ask you to share them. And of course, be sure to visit our website where you'll find connections to everywhere else. That's uh, www.thecitadelhq, as in headquarters, thecitadelhq.com, and there you will connect and you can visit our other places where we do our social media networking. So thank you once again. I am very excited just to be alive. How about you? It doesn't matter what's happening around. As long as there is life, we have hope. We have a reason to live. And our God is, is the one who gives us the life that we need to truly, truly live. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're going to go into a time of worship. And we're gonna, we have some words on the screen so everyone can join in wherever you are. I want you to sing out loud on the top of your voice and praise the Lord. And we know that the spirit of the living God is gonna fall right where you are this morning as you lift a praise up to him, amen. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The strength of the Lord come upon you today.
rejoicing this morning. Somebody is giving thanks this morning because we know that when our backs were against the wall, Lord, it was you who made the way. Hallelujah. It was you who parted our Red Sea, oh God. It was you who destroyed the enemies in our life who were standing in our way, oh God. It was you, dear Father Lord, who rolled away stones from graves, oh God, so that we could come out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You moved mountains. Yes, you did. You caused the walls to fall with your Thompson. 
It comes to us from 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verses 10 through to 20. The word of the Lord. Let us listen to the word of God as it comes to us from 2 Chronicles 32, from verse 10 to 20. 2 Chronicles 32, from verse 10 to 20. Thus said Sennacherib, king of Assyria, Whereon do you trust? And ye abide in the siege of Jerusalem. Do it not Ezekiah persuade you to give over yourself to die by the famine and by thirst, saying, The Lord our God shall deliver us out of the hand of the king of Assyria. Hath not the same Ezekiah taken away his high places and his, and his altars and commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, He shall worship before one altar and burn incense upon it. Knowing not what I and my fathers have done unto all the people of other lands, were the gods of the nations of those lands anyways able to deliver their lands out of my hand? Who was there among all the gods of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people out of my hand? And your God should be able to deliver you out of my hand. No, therefore, let not Ezekiah deceive you, nor persuade you on this matter, neither yet believe him. For no god of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people out of my hand, and out of the hand of my fathers. How much less shall your God deliver you out of my hand? And his servants speak yet more against the Lord God and against his servant, Ezekiah. He wrote also letters to Raelan, the Lord God of Israel, and to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people out of my land, so shall not the God of Ezekiah deliver his people out of my land. Then they cried with a loud voice in the Jewish speech unto the people of Jerusalem that were on the wall to affright them and to trouble them that they might take the city. And they spake against the God of Jerusalem as against the gods of the people of the earth, which were the work of the hands of man. And for this cause, Ezekiah the king, and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos, prayed and cried to heaven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we bow our heads, we bow our hearts, we bow our minds, we bow our souls, we bow our spirits to you. In your presence we seek to come, O oh God, and we ask that even now you would remove any contaminants of our spirits far from us. And Lord, we pray that you would clear all our physical, spiritual channels so that our focus will be primarily on your word now. Yes, Lord. And so, Father, with this in mind, we bear ourselves before you across this network. And we ask you, Father, that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts combine be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We pray this because of and in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, and all God's people from everywhere, 
agree and so we say amen greetings to you again in the name of the Lord Jesus who is the Christ I want to ask you a question this morning is somebody making fun of you is somebody laughing at you is somebody laughing at your God laughing at the fact that you have decided to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior is somebody poking fun at you I have a word for you who laughs laugh the one with the last laugh is the one with the best laugh and so the topic for this morning is going to be the last love and I'm using this 32nd chapter of 2nd Chronicles as a backdrop to parallel some principles that the Lord has caused to be in our spirit in my spirit this morning and I pray that it will be transmitted to you especially if you're being ridiculed if you're being made fun of stay with us keep your fingers in that same chapter there of second chronicles chapter 32 and look at the first phrase as we set this thing up and i'm looking at the new international version simpler to understand i think look at the first phrase in verse one of that same chapter after all that after all that Hezekiah had done faithfully after all that Hezekiah had faithfully done. Stop there. It's a phrase. After what? After what? Well, just for those of you who didn't get to read the preceding chapters, uh, a series of unfaithful kings had embarrassed and disgraced the name of God, desecrated the temple. Uh, they had taken part in all the evil that was going around, worshiping false god on just about every green hill close the temple down but yes this Hezekiah when he came to reign he not only restored order but he tore down the, some of the high places and removed all the scattered places of worship he centralized worship to Judah in Israel and Jerusalem right there and he reopened the temple and reconnected the people of Israel with God. He even encouraged and caused the reinstitution of the Passover. So he had done well after a series of unfaithful kings. But after all this, something happens. Let me pause here to say that you could do all that the Lord has asked you to do. You could live righteously. It doesn't always cocoon you against evil attackers. They love to attack the people of God. So listen, if after you've done all the right thing, you've prayed, you've fasted, you've built, you've you set your family up, you've re-established re connection, if something comes to attack you, let that not be a means of questioning God. Where are you now? Where were you when I needed you? Never lose your faith. So verse 1 of the 32nd chapter of 2 Chronicles, it said, after Hezekiah had so faithfully done all these things, a person with a, a very strange, interesting name, Sennacherib, you heard the name called in the passage that was read there. He was king of Assyria at the time. He came up with what he conceived as a brilliant idea to invade Judah. He decided to lay siege to fortified cities with no other purpose, no other aim but to conquer it. And of course, Judah was caught in his cross heels. Sennacherib, who was this guy? Yes, he was now king of Syria. He had inherited a sprawling empire from his father, Sargon II. And so vast was that inherited empire. It 
extended from Babylonia all the way southern through southern Palestine to Asia Minor. So he had succeeded in conquering many nations and now the people of God, Judah, was now in his vision for capture. But let me tell you something. When the enemy is seeking to attack you, it's always good to give God something to work with. Here is a statement that is not in the Bible, but it is supported. God helps those who help themselves. That statement you never find in the Bible, but there are principles there. Give God something to work with. Here now was King Ezekiah in this threatening situation. And I'm going to be using a number of words that begin with the letter C. When Ezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come and that he intended to wage war against Jerusalem, what did this king do? Listen to the first word. He consulted with his officials. He, those are the military officials. He consulted with them. He didn't only consult with them. He had an idea to start with. He said, listen, I want you to go and get some people, gather some people, and cut off the water supply outside of the city. We are not going to enable the enemy to conquer us. Hello? Am I talking to somebody here this morning? Are you aiding the enemy who seeks to attack, to destroy you? Are you leaving things that would help him so that you are going down and the enemy succeed? We'll get back to that. So, Hezekiah decided that, listen, we're not, we're gonna block these things up so that the springs to the city won't help the invading Sennacherib and his army. So, these men who were consulted, they did some things. They gathered people and they blocked the flow to the water supply surrounding the city. <laughs> now, what, then he did something else, Ezekiel. He said to these people, first he consulted with his leaders, and then he did some things. He corrected some problems. What did he do? He built, he said to them, listen, I want you to go and correct these breaches in the wall. Fix them, repair the broken sections of the wall. And after you've done that, build a tower on it. So you consult, you correct. And then here's the next word, construct. You build a tower on it. Construct. Also, build another wall outside that one so that there is reinforcement and reinforce the terraces. Fix it up. Let the city of David be as impregnable as we can make it. We are not going to help the enemy to win. We are not going to help the enemy to defeat us. No, no, no. We're going to do all that we can to block the enemy and so to ensure that we are not defeated. Come on. <laughs> but that's not enough. It's okay to consult. It's okay to correct. It's okay to construct. It's okay to create. But the next thing Ezekiah did was to convene what I would call a general meeting with all the people under his command. He convened a meeting with them. And when he convened that meeting, he appointed military officers over the people. He organized them, he assembled them before they were in their regular meetings place, in the auditorium, in the colossal. In this case, it was in the square, that central gathering point. Why did Ezekiah do that? He did it for a special reason. He wanted to encourage the souls he was in charge of. How did he encourage them? 
You see, when a war is going to start, or even after it has begun, war has two facets primarily to it. It has the actual battle, and it also has the information phase of it. Yes, I know we're in the 21st century. You, we are in the information age, but information is nothing new. Come with me to the then information age of the time. So this is what happened. Watch with me now. Here is Ezekiel with the gathered people. He said, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army with him. Uh, for there is a greater power with us than with him. There is a greater power with you than with your enemies. There is a greater power with us as kingdom citizens than with them outside. You see, <laughs> with the attackers, with the enemy, with those people, with all of them, with Chanakarib, with the enemy, with him, is only the arm of flesh. But with us, is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Be encouraged. There are more who are for us. There are more who are for you than those that would array themselves against us. So don't be afraid. You see, they are, they are worshipping their guns. They are worshipping their bombs. They are worshipping their nuclear ammunition. They are worshipping their cyber security system and how they can use it to invade the America or whatever country that you are in. And they are doing it so that they can take up a boat in your back office for how many months and steal your secret if they can. Because they have this technology or because they have the long range missile that can attack your your, your, your territory, your country, your, your military forces, because they have all of these things. But let me remind you something. These are all physical, temporal things. And it doesn't matter how powerful, how far these long-range missiles can go. They cannot reach anywhere near the extent of the arm of God. And I hear the people say yes. So here was Ezekiah encouraging his people. And guess what happened? The people gained confidence from Hezekiah, the king of Judah, because he encouraged them. They gained confidence. Was it Marcus Mosiah Garvey, who lived somewhere between 1887 and I think 1914? So was it not this great Jamaican political activist and black nationalist leader? Was it not Marcus? Mosiah Gavi who said, if you have no confidence in self, you are twice defeated in the race of life. Was it not he who said, with confidence you have won even before you start? That was Marcus Garvey. It sounds good. And yes, there is a sense where it is true. But it is not absolutely so until you recognize what I am saying here in this situation, it is true to have confidence. That is why Ezekiah encourages people. So when the enemy is seeking to attack you, and there are a number of things that you can do. When he's coming to attack you, you have to consult with those who know about the situation that you are warring when the enemy is coming to attack you, you need to strategize as much as you can. Give God all that you can to work with, and I'll get back to more of that later. But that's not the best part of it. Later, when the king of Assyria, Sennacherib, when he and all his forces were laying siege to some of the older cities, like Lachish, he sent his officers to Jerusalem to do what? To taunt him. And I won't go through all of that because you heard it read. Verses 10 to 20. It tells you all about the taunting that these people did. They started an information campaign. And in that information campaign, they were telling him, 
They went right up to the square, right up to Judah, and they went to tell, <laughs> to boast, to brag, to laugh at. And what are you boasting your confidence? Why are you are still staying in the city that we are planning to attack? You better run, because we are laying siege to that. Uh, and here was Ezekiah still standing in confidence. He said, the Lord our God will save us from the hand of you, Sennacherib. You, Assyrian king. You, enemy. So he is sending his men to brag to them, why are you staying there? And then he said, don't listen to Ezekiah. Because when he's telling you that, he can't save you. Understand that we have defeated many nations before. Understand that we have conquered many cities, villages, towns, and nobody could defeat us. As a matter of fact, I have confidence, the mockers are saying, because my father, who gave me all that I have, this vast empire, nobody could defeat Zabon the second, and I, am the, I have a history of destroying any nation that I come up against. <laughs> so they were pregnant with earthly confidence, they were pregnant with false confidence, and they bragged and they talked. But while they were telling, doing it, they didn't even do it in their Greek tongue, their oppressors tongue. It seemed as if there was some bilingual situation going on because they started talking in the Hebrew tongue so that the children of Judah who were sitting on the wall could understand that this is what they want. They want to intimidate you with false information, mm -hmm. with, with, with fake news. They want to twist it and they take a little bit of the truth and twist it around so that they can cause the people to be fearful. For it was true that they had defeated many nations. It is true that they caused uh, mayhem where they went. It is true that Sennacherib's father was victorious. It is true. But is it true that the maker of heaven and earth cannot deliver the people of Judah in the setting that we're talking about? This is why it was so important for Ezekiah to encourage his people, yes. to let them know where they were standing. Yes. But as much and as relevant as that piece of encouragement was given back there, so listen, don't be afraid because um, they are trusting in their fleshy military might. But although we have done what we can, although we have consulted, we have prepared, we have constructed, uh, and we have even created our little weapons, but we know a weapon that is beyond us. If you look at verse 20 in that same chapter, you will see where I'm getting. King Ezekiel consulted with Rob Shoulder with the son of Amos, a prophet that we all know so well in Christendom, the prophet Isaiah. And what did they do? They didn't cower and tremble and say, oh, what are we going to do? We can't go against this vast army. They're... No, they didn't do that. What did they do? They cried out in prayer yes. to heaven about the situation. They cried out yes, they in prayer. Now, sometimes you have to pray quietly. Sometimes you have to pray internally. But there comes a time when you have to cry out with a loud voice, Lord, make off heaven and earth. You see the forces of darkness have arrayed themselves against me, against us, seeking to destroy our principles, our precepts, seeking to destroy us, to wipe us off the map, seeking to build up and to lift up and to exalt their earthly idols that they worship. And above all else, Lord God, they are seeking to disrespect you. They are seeking to call you a liar and to say that you're ineffective. Oh Lord, come, arise and let the enemies be scattered. So they pray. When you get into your situation of challenge, when you get into your situation of, of, of confrontation and seeming imminent threat that in earth is setting seem bound to destroy you had not been for the God. Go down on your knees if you wish. Stand and lift your hand if you may. Walk around your house 
if you are able to do that. Oh yeah, pull the side, pull the car off the road to the side. Lift your hand off the steering wheel and call out to God. Uh, you don't want to understand what I'm saying. Let me tell you something. Let me just pause and tell you something here. Because I've seen it happen over and over and over. I lived in a certain uh, island several years ago. And I had a beautiful car, practically new, that I bought. Imported it all the way from Japan. And, and I had this car. Something went wrong with it. I gave it to somebody to fix. And the person tried to scrap it and send it back to me. Fast forward. This car, beautiful. Somebody came up with the idea to steal it. And I remember driving to my home in the other little car that my wife would drive because we worked at two different places. So I was driving her car. And out of the belly of my being, I heard some words that I would not be smart enough to speak on my own. But I heard myself say, Lord, they have stolen the better car that I have. And I have this one, but let me tell you something, Lord. They have stolen that, but if they steal this, I am still going to serve you. I am still going to worship you. I heard those out of my mouth. I won't go into all the details on this particular occasion, but it wasn't long after that those two cars were, were, were gone. And in place, God miraculously provided two newer cars, one for my wife and myself. I'm saying this, that when the attacker comes in your direction, you should not be afraid, you should not be dismayed. You should seek to run. And if you're feeling too weak and too troubled to do it by yourself, go and find a person who is connected. This is 2021 and we're talking about the year of reconnection. And you can't talk about reconnection without talking about connection. So find somebody who is connected to the King of Kings. Walk with them and say, listen, I need you to cry out to God yes. with me. Yes. I need, I, I understand that, that, that one can chase a thousand, but two can put ten thousand to, to flight. So, so come with me, my wife. Let's pray. Let's storm the gates of heaven. Ah, and invite God into this situation. This is what Ezekiah did. And he joined up with Isaiah the prophet, son of Amos, and they prayed. And what happened next is so fantastic that I could stay here and preach forever, but I shall not want. When you get to verse 21 and beyond, you say, and the Lord sent an angel who annihilated, totally eradicated, destroyed all the fighting men and commanders and officers in the camp of the invading Sennacherib's Assyrian army. But he wasn't killed. Justice was just being served because God's people called out to the maker of heaven and earth. What happened to Sennacherib? He withdrew to his own land and he did so in embarrassment and disgrace because finally he was defeated. Finally, there was a little people who had a big God to whom they prayed. And that little people called out to their big God. And their big God showed up in excellence yes. and eradicated, totally annihilated the enemies. <laughs> but what happened to Sennacherib? Sometimes we have to pray for our enemies, you know, because even though we want justice, sometimes justice can be cruel, cruel. Well. So they were laughing at you, they were mocking you. But no, when Sennacherib went into the temple of his God, his idol temple, the God that he had been bragging about who had led him into great victories, <laughs> the idol God that he had worshipped, the idol God that he had elevated and pumped up, as if that God were great. 
he went back to that temple to worship that God. And this is, this is sad, this is sorrowful. Because what happened to him was that some of his sons, his own flesh and the blood, cut him down in that idol temple with the sword. And that is how he was destroyed. I mentioned it some weeks ago. Some of us are playing some dangerous games and I remember this song, I'm not gonna sing it, I'm just gonna tell you the words. The Bee Gees did it some years ago. It said, I started a joke. <laughs> I started the whole world crying, but I didn't know that the joke was on me. I started to cry, <laughs> which led the whole world laughing, but what I didn't see that the joke was on me. This is what happened now. So let me ask you a question. Who is having the last laugh? Is it the idol gods or Jehovah the maker of heaven and earth? Who is having the last laugh now? Is it the invading army or the or God's chosen people? Let me ask you, who is having the last laugh? Those who worship the idols or those who worship the maker of heaven and earth? The last laugh. So I want to warn you this morning. I want to warn you this evening, if it's evening, where you are. Be careful how you spend your laughter. Be careful whom you laugh at. Because the person with the last laugh, if, he is, if that person is connected to the king of kings, that person will have the best laugh. So the Lord saved Ezekiel and the people of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, king of Assyria, yes, and from the hand of others. He took care of them on every side. God will take care of you on every side when the enemy comes out to attack you. He will come out from one direction and he will flee in seven directions. Oh, many brought offerings after they saw the great work of God. They brought offering to Jerusalem to the Lord. Valuable gifts for Ezekiah, the king of Judah. For then, for then on he, from then on, he was highly regarded by all the nations. So when people laugh at you, if your attitude is right, if your behavior is good, if your God is the correct God, you will get the last laugh. The last laugh. And people will see. They will take note. And God will get the glory. Amen. So let me tell you something. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Be strong and courageous when the enemy attacks. Yes. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Because they exalt themselves as king and because they have destroyed many families, nations, cities, towns, and villages. No. For there is a greater power than whatever power that they think they have. You see, with them is the power of the flesh, the natural, the physical. But the arms of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own flesh and blood. You have to stand up for Christ. The, the hymn says, stand up, stand up for Jesus. His soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. Because the, the Lord our God is with us. The Lord our God will help us. The Lord our God will strengthen us. The Lord will deliver us. So listen, and I close with this. Trouble will come even after you have done well. Yes. You have done all that you could. You. But when, number two, when there is credible threat, you should strategize. Consult any defense team that you have. Convene a general meeting. Fix or correct what needs to be corrected. Construct new towers in your situation. Build up enough resistance. Amen. Create whatever weapon you can that will help you. Whatever defense you can. But that alone will not be enough. You have to get to the defense that is above all else. Along the way you want to encourage yourself. Encourage one another. That's number three. Number four. Recognize and decide who has the final outcome. 
when they begin to taunt you. Endure the taunting and keep your faith, keep your courage, keep your smile. But above all else, ask for divine help. Get somebody who's connected. Ask. And I'll just add this one for good measure. <laughs> Stand still after you've done all of that. And see what Jehovah will do. Yes. Stand still and see what Jehovah will do for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, manifest your word in the lives of the hearers right now, O oh God. Yes. Let them understand, Lord, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Let them understand that no weapon formed against them through will prosper because through you they have victory. And I pray for this young man, this woman, this boy, this girl, this older person who is toying. I pray now, Lord, that they will open their hearts, their minds, their souls, and their spirit, and they will say, O oh God, maker of heaven and earth, I confess to you that I have not been what you want me to be. I am asking you to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness, O oh God. And I invite your son Jesus to come into my entire existence. Amen. I accept Jesus, the Christ, Amen. as Lord of my life. Amen. And I do so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 www.thecitadelhq.com and of course we get together again on Tuesday at 7.30 right here at the Citadel HQ for our Tuesday evening communication meeting so make that an appointed time for you to join us again on Tuesday and so I'm confident that the Lord will bless you and that he will keep you and cause his face to shine upon you he will lift up the countenance of his peace. He will give you victory in your endeavors if you make him your God. Because he's faithful. And Yeshua is his name. Mighty.